Here's a look at some of the times when Hell's Kitchen went to hell. The red team started off well with the appetizers, but as soon as they moved on to the entrees, problems came left and right. Now, Dana Cohen was working at the meat station. And when Chef Ramsay asked her for an update on the meat, she noticed that the Wellingtons were scorched. Oh my god. Guys, I have to refire the Wellingtons. She required 20 minutes for the refire, and for that, Dana asked Chef Ramsay if he could flip to another ticket. Basically, she just wanted to move on to the next ticket while the Wellingtons were cooking. And, well, Chef Ramsay surprisingly allowed it. But it's what happened next that made him furious. When Dana sent her lamb to the pass, it came out raw, and Ramsay was done giving her chances. Everyone's walking around like we're just all stars. We are currently behind. It was astonishing to see Dana struggling at the meat station because she was so good in season 10. Back then, she ranked in third place and was even allowed to keep her jacket because of her extraordinary performance. So, where did all that passion go? When Dana was on the last ticket, she believed that she had everything under control. However, when she sent the Wellingtons to the pass, this is how they turned out. Just look at the color of that beef. I'm a cook, chef. Yeah, he's overcooked. In the hopes of saving her own butt, Dana went back to get some backup. But when she eventually sent her dish to the pass, it came out raw, and this left Chef Ramsay in great dismay. I don't know where to Come go. Come on, Dana. I don't know where to don't go. Don't fall on the last ticket. Ramsay was actually so disappointed that he sent the entire red team back to the dorms and finished the desserts with sous chef Christina. After a really poor performance, Dana's nomination wasn't much of a shocker. And despite Elise Harris being a strong contender for elimination, Chef Ramsay based all his decisions on performance alone and not personal feelings. Which is why Dana was asked to leave. I thought I couldn't wait to bring you back. But unfortunately, today has been one of the worst days you ever had. Of course, with her talent and skills, she could have gone much farther in the competition. However, it looks like there was an issue. Not with Dana, but her oven. I came across a claim on Reddit where a user had to share some inside information. Apparently, sous chef Christina said that Dana's oven was defective, which is what screwed up her Wellingtons. Now, clearly, that wasn't aired as a part of the show. But if that was the case, I think her elimination was totally unfair. There have been worse contestants who were given more chances, and Dana definitely deserved one. What do you think? Was Chef Ramsay even aware of the oven issue, or did Dana just truly screw up? Well, it's not the first time Hell's Kitchen equipment had issues. But you know how when everything else fails, the sous chefs are always there to take charge and save the day. But this next contestant decided to screw up on one of the sous chefs' most important days, their wedding service. And trust me, what was supposed to be a memorable night turned out to be a dreadful one. This happened in season 15 when Hell's Kitchen took on the responsibility of cooking for sous chef Andy's wedding service. I know, definitely not a day to fool around, right? But one contestant failed to receive this important memo. I knew this was going to be a rocky ride right from the appetizer round. But when it came to the entrees, it was nothing short of a disaster. Hassan Musulmani, who was at the meat station, frustrated just about everyone with his performance, and this infuriated Chef Ramsay. If you remember, Hassan was running around like a headless chicken much before the prep even started. Some time later, when Jared Bobkin then communicated with Hassan about the timing, both of them got started with their orders. However, despite all the communication, they sent chicken that was pink, and Ramsay couldn't believe it. This is not happening. What was happening here? Chef Ramsay only wanted the best for sous chef Andy, but it looks like things were gonna go south real soon. One more mistake, and I'm gonna kick you all out. Imagine checking every last detail to perfection and realizing that something as important as food got messed up? That's exactly what the wedding planner was going through. They just need to regroup, okay. get their heads together. All right, are they regrouped? Are their heads I, together? We hope so. Well, she definitely had enough reason to worry because only half the guests were being served. And guess what? Even the groom's mother hadn't received any food yet. Where's our food? Do you want my mom? Put it four ways. Well, seriously, you think the mother of the bride could get some food around here? That's how backed up the red kitchen was. I don't think there could be any bigger embarrassment than this. So Chef Ramsay dragged the red team into the pantry and whipped them left, right, and center. Can't do this to me. Who cooked the chicken? Hassan first took the blame, but also revealed that he had some backup ready. And thankfully, their third attempt was actually accepted. Even though both teams did complete the service, it was nothing like Chef Ramsay had hoped for. Sous Chef Andy deserved better, and Ramsay was embarrassed beyond measure. I couldn't even look Andy in the eyes. I was that embarrassed. It looks like Chef Andy didn't make a good guest at Hell's Kitchen. One of the viewers recalled that she actually had to cook her own appetizers in another season. Do you know which one? Help me out in the comments with that, please. Anyway, another user joked about the possibility of Chef Andy having to cook and finish the service of her own wedding. 
Well, I'm glad things didn't go that bad, and she actually left Hell's Kitchen as a happy bride that night. Actually, I think Chef Ramsay should have known better and never hosted a wedding service here. Because, if you know from experience, the outcome has never been great. What makes me say this though? Do you guys remember the fifth episode of season 3? That was the first time Hell's Kitchen catered a wedding service. And it went terribly. Now, this next contestant ended up taking on a role she wasn't even assigned to and ended up wrecking her entire team's performance. In the end, everyone was embarrassed, but more so Chef Ramsay. What happened is, like in any other challenge, Ramsay introduced a twist in this wedding service. Both teams were given a time limit of 30 minutes to shop with a budget of $100. And then, they had another hour to cook their dishes for the wedding planning challenge. At the start of the challenge, Melissa Fierpo turned out to be the self-appointed leader that no one wanted. Out of absolutely nowhere, Melissa took the responsibility of making decisions, and that was her first mistake. All of her decisions were questionable, and I wonder why the rest of the team just went with it. Right from the time of shopping, Melissa suggested that the team use duck as their main dish instead of lamb. Although the red team was concerned about the cooking time limit, they still went along with Melissa's decision. Is that going to be feasible for all those people for the wedding reception? They probably didn't want to argue, but this decision was going to cost them heavily. When the red team started to cook their dishes, Melissa started to act all high and mighty. If anybody has a question, let's just ask me since that's what the chef's been doing. There was a time when Julia Williams decided to sear the duck breast and Melissa just interjected and told her to do something else. She even insulted Bonnie Muirhead by asking Julia not to listen to her. You're supposed to listen to me, not Bonnie. I'm not sure what kind of leader she wanted to be, but like I said, everything she was doing was wrong. When Julia took out the duck breast from the oven, Melissa oddly placed it back into the oven to keep it warm. Did she forget that she'd cooked the meat even further? In the end, the duck was incredibly overcooked, and the worst part was that Melissa refused to take responsibility for it. What happened next was pretty expected. It's overdone. I know, you made it overdone. I didn't no, make no, it no. overdone. Your job, your station. The red team sadly didn't have enough time to make another one, and when it was time, this was what Chef Ramsay had to say. You're standing there acting like some jumped up little cave woman. Well, I hope that helps her stay grounded, but the damage was already done, and the red team was about to face the heat. When Melissa learned that the couple would be judging this dish, she was stunned. She told Chef Ramsay that the red team should just skip the challenge, and what do you think Ramsay said? This is barely 24 hours before their big day. You are not gonna spoil it. Well, it's way too late to change your mind now, sweetheart. But Chef Ramsay had no idea that the dish was already spoiled. He only realized how bad things were when he served the dish. And at that point, I think the famous chef thought it would have been better if he had just listened to Melissa. Because, well, who expected contestants from Hell's Kitchen, seasoned chefs who made it this far into the competition, to serve something as hideous as this? Uh, right. While an embarrassed Chef Ramsay passed the tasting, viewers were quick to judge the dish by the looks of it. One said that the duck looked like a loaf of bread made out of rubber, while another said that Melissa efficiently forced her team into making a rubber duck that they never wanted to. Melissa's poor leadership left Chef Ramsay so embarrassed that he actually had to hide his face behind his hands. He must have been wondering why he didn't eliminate her sooner. When the blue team's Brad Miller brought his risotto to the pass, Chef Ramsay realized that he made too much of it. If there was anything that Chef Ramsay had to say about the service, it was this. It's not a good start, guys. Stop panicking. Back in the red kitchen, communication was at its best, and the team soon sent out their appetizers. On one side, the red team's diners were enjoying their food, while the blue teams were left hungry. One hour into the service, the red kitchen managed to send out 28 appetizers, and this made Chef Ramsay happy. However, Bonnie Muirhead's pan caught fire, and she was uncertain of what to do next. While she was struggling to put the fire out, Chef Ramsay jumped to the rescue and lectured her about fire safety. It would be wise to listen to this carefully, since it might just come in handy someday. Here's Chef Ramsay's tip on how to put out a pan that's on fire. Wait, never walk around with a pan. On fire, you stand back. That's yes, the chef. first thing. You stand back. Yes, no chef. water, no salt, nothing. Back in the blue kitchen, John Waller's mashed potatoes came out runny because they didn't have enough salt in them. And dejected, Chef Ramsay said, Get some potatoes on you. Yes, chef. F off. F off. It's like a bunch of f babies here. Then Brad sent out another order of risotto that was overcooked and Chef Ramsay literally chewed him out for it. Though he agreed with Ramsay, he felt that Melissa screwed him over by overcooking the rice earlier. An hour and a half into the service, the red team continued to push out their entrees. But then, Julia got confused with the sea bass order and panicked. She didn't realize what was happening until Chef Ramsay reminded her that it was at her station. But when Julia still looked lost, Chef Ramsay got angry with her. 
In the blue kitchen, Melissa brought her monkfish to the pass, but it turned out to be overcooked. Things got so much worse when she revealed that she only had one monkfish left. This meant that none of the six orders of monkfish could be sent out. Chef Ramsay couldn't believe what was happening. He then moved Rock Harper to the fish station and asked Melissa to move to the garnish station. Soon after, Melissa revealed more bad news. She said that they were running out of mashed potatoes and no one knew where to find more. This only added another layer of stress to Chef Ramsay. And when Jean-Philippe brought back an entire table of six entrees for being overcooked, Chef Ramsay was starting to feel worse. Ramsay then sarcastically thanked Melissa, Brad, and Josh for their mistake and shut down both kitchens. After the dinner service, Chef Ramsay showed his disappointment to the blue team. This time, Chef Ramsay had made up his mind. Without a second thought, he eliminated Melissa for not improving despite being transferred to the blue team. But this next service was so disastrous that at the end of it, Chef Ramsay did something he's never done on Hell's Kitchen before. I've seen some really shocking eliminations happen on the show, but what Chef Ramsay did this time was unbelievable. However, do you know what else is unbelievable? That I pump out these amazing videos to you for free. There's a lot of effort that goes into these guys, so don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. With that out of the way, let's see how this service was doomed before it even started. In the 6th episode of season 11, Chef Ramsay assigned Jessica Lewis and Barrett Beyer as waiters. This was to make them understand what servers go through when chefs make mistakes. Once the service took off, Jessica was confused, but she was able to take the first order. On the other hand, Barrett's slow start started to irritate Chef Ramsay. When Barrett finally delivered the Blue Kitchen's first ticket, it was so bad that Chef Ramsay ripped the ticket and asked him to rewrite it all over again. Meanwhile, Jessica finally walked in with the Red Kitchen's first ticket, but Chef Ramsay was annoyed that it took her so long. But once again, since Chef Ramsay couldn't make anything out from it, he did this. Jessica, how long were you at school for? Six months, Chef. You only went to school for six months? Jesus yes, Chef. Christ. Hurry up. Barrett's second attempt was the same as well, but Jessica managed to have hers accepted. Although initially the team had a small communication gap, they still got their order accepted. In the blue kitchen, with Barrett finally delivering a clear handwritten ticket, the first order of scallops got rejected for being overcooked. Chef Ramsay became furious and berated Raymond Alonghi for his mistake. However, the red team soon started to have trouble with communication. Susan Heaton, without communicating with anyone, sent her risotto to the pass. Then, Amanda Giblin sent scallops that were raw, however her refire was accepted. In the meantime, the blue team moved on to the entrees but were left in shambles when Dan Ryan and Alonghi started arguing. This ticked off Chef Ramsay. Blue team, I don't know what you two are doing down there. Fine. How long? We're coming to the pass. Let's go! Then. Soon after, Raymond walked up to the pass with the wrong fish, and this led to Chef Ramsay chewing him out. He doesn't even know. Oh my god. Despite the lapse in time, both kitchens were overwhelmed with their orders, and both teams' diners were left hungry. In the red kitchen, the gap in communication continued between Amanda and Susan, and this led to Susan sending out an undercooked risotto. Chef Ramsay was already furious with the red team, but Jessica managed to make things even worse. When Chef Ramsay called her back to the kitchen to tell the team about the long wait, Jessica just started to smirk instead of hurrying the hell up. And this made a really infuriated Chef Ramsay do this. All of you, stop. Come here. All of you. You think this is a joke? No, Chef, I don't. We're dying. The blue team was in a hurry to dish out orders, and in the midst of it, an overcooked halibut was sent to the pass. And this time, it was Dan and Raymond at the receiving end of Chef Ramsay's fury. Dan! Raymond! You made me wait? Yes, Chef. And then I wait, and then I wait, and then you me! It looks like all the hurrying was causing immense confusion with not only the communication, but also the cooking times. The Red Kitchen kept sending out orders that were either raw or overcooked. While the teams were trying very hard to get their act together, the wait time for the food was growing unbearably long. At one point, Chef Ramsay was so disappointed that he made Nedra Harris apologize to one of the tables. Back in the blue kitchen, Raymond was working on his third attempt of the same order of halibut. While the pork and the wellingtons were cooked perfectly, the halibut came out raw yet again. And that was the last straw for Ramsay. He kicked the blue team out of the kitchen. Meanwhile, Chef Ramsay warned the red team of the same consequences should they make another careless mistake. But it looks like the entire service was just jinxed. Absolutely nothing seemed to be going as planned. Soon after, when Mary Ponelt's pork turned out raw, Chef Ramsay did this. You, 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 you. Get out! Disaster! 
After the disastrous night, with both teams being kicked out, Chef Ramsay did something he never did before. Mary and Nedra from the red team and Dan and Raymond from the blue team were nominated for elimination. Chef Ramsay made all four contestants take their jackets off, but he didn't eliminate them. Instead, he put all four of them on probation. They would now have to earn their jackets back by the end of the next service. If not, that would be the end of their journey on the show. But what I appreciate the most about Chef Ramsay is that he values every person's role during the dinner service. Asking the chefs to step in as waiters or as sous chefs is a testimony to this. But how about this time, when a contestant's logic left Chef Ramsay baffled? Hoping to see the blue team in a better position, Chef Ramsay walked up to Liu to check up on her spaghetti timing. But Liu hadn't gotten her water to a boil yet. When Chef Ramsay asked her about it, she simply admitted that the water was indeed not boiling. Ramsay was a little confused, but he had to clear things up. So, he asked her if she had topped it with cold water, and much to his surprise, or rather his shock, Liu gave him the worst reason ever. She said this, I thought cold water was supposed to boil faster than hot water. After listening to the absurdity of this statement, Chef Ramsay couldn't even snap back at her. All he could do was this. What? The disbelief in Chef Ramsay's voice was palpable. Once this episode aired, Liu became quite the star for this meme-worthy moment. Fans pitched in with all kinds of comments. Referring to Chef Ramsay, one said, Homie isn't even mad, just concerned for this person's intelligence and well-being. While another said, she better get an award for completely confusing the sh** out of Chef Ramsay. But guess what? There were also those who supported her claims. One said, to be fair, this is kind of a myth that goes around. I remember hearing this years ago. So whose team are you on? Let us know in the comment section down below. But that's not the only thing Liu did that day. Sometime later, Liu moved to the meat station but couldn't get a grip on her timing. Her struggle turned out to be a major setback for the blue team. In the end, the red team was able to send out 15 entrees while the blue team lagged behind with just 8. If that wasn't enough, Liu struggled quite a bit with the lamb sauce as well. But it was her excuses that annoyed Chef Ramsay even more. Chef Ramsay was fed up with Liu's pathetic replies, so he warned her by saying this. You've now pushed me to the limit. I suggest you shut your mouth. Last chance. However, tired of waiting, the customers had to leave the dining room hungry. After all these blunders, it doesn't surprise me that Liu was eliminated from the competition that same night. But this next contestant cooked the entire batch of filet mignon. Chef Ramsay chastised her with his sharp tongue, but did she learn her lesson? In the fifth episode of season eight, both teams were getting ready for the prom night dinner service. As both teams began their orders, Emily Kutchen sent out crab cakes that were soggy. What's more, Boris Polshuk ended up cooking 10 crab cakes when only two were ordered. Both teams were driving Chef Ramsay up the wall with their mistakes. But what Melissa Donnie did next made Chef Ramsay lose his cool. After only a half an hour into the dinner service, the red team only served three tables of appetizers. Despite this, Donnie decided to get started on the filet mignon. Chef Ramsay was so pissed that he asked her if she wanted to go home. But just you wait till you see how many filets were ready to be served. To everyone's horror, this is what Chef Ramsay found. 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. There's 23 on board, Chef. So what? Why are you cooking them now? That was the entire batch of orders for the night. Chef Ramsay couldn't believe how Donnie could be so stupid to prepare the entire batch. They weren't only prepared well ahead of time, but Donnie had also overcooked them. What a massive waste! On top of this, Polshuk from the blue team sent out crab cakes that were cold. While the blue team had a slow start because of this, they still managed to send out food. Later on, Chef Ramsay found some disgusting purple goop on the red team's plate and Kuchin sent out raw halibut. This service was testing the limit of Chef Ramsay's patience. One mistake followed another, but Chef Ramsay lost it when Donnie walked up with beef that was rare. Chef Ramsay still wasn't over her filet mignon blunder, so he instantly started lecturing her. Just as he was explaining what needed to be done, Nona Sively rudely interrupted the famous chef. Chef Ramsay immediately called her out and asked her to take over his place in the kitchen. And how he did it is well worth watching. I'm gonna put them back in the oven. Explain to your team. There you go. Considering Donnie's huge blunder that day, it surprised all of us when the one who was eliminated was Kuchins. Donnie wasted so much food for crying out loud. The next day, the blue team was in for a treat. Chef Ramsay transferred Donnie to the blue team. While the red team was ecstatic, the same couldn't be said about the blue team. But Chef Ramsay gave Donnie one last chance. 
The only thing she had to do was prove that she was worthy of being in the kitchen. But she failed. During the next dinner service, Donnie was at the fish station. When she first sent scallops to the pass, they came out raw. Then on the refire, she charred the hell out of them. On the third attempt, it was rejected yet again for being overcooked. Donnie then revealed that there were no scallops left to work with. Guess how much she wasted? Rob McHugh has the answer to that one. Melissa must have cooked about 10, 10 pounds of scallops all cooked off for the garbage. Jeff Ramsey was furious. Thinking on his feet, he simply asked the blue team to replace the scallop salad with rock shrimp salad and continue with the service. In the end, both teams failed miserably and were named joint losers. There are deliberations that result in very shocking eliminations, but in this episode, almost everyone knew who was going to leave. To no one's surprise, Donnie was booted out before she could even waste more food. But this next contestant screwed up Hell's Kitchen's first ever dog show. While all the contestants were really excited to make finger licking food, this contestant got confused about who he was cooking for. Uh, I already have a bad feeling about this one. In season 13, Chef Ramsay hosted the first ever Hell's Kitchen dog show. Wow, now isn't that gonna be exciting? The culinary genius had to come up with some interesting challenges, one of which was the dog show tasting challenge. For this challenge, both teams would have to make two appetizers and three entrees for the menu. And the team with the most chosen items would win the challenge. The teams had 45 minutes to cook their dishes, and because the blue team had one extra member, one of them would have to sit things out. While almost everyone understood the task at hand, Say Dancy believed that the dish they were cooking was actually for the dogs. So she decided to make braised beef for them. It wasn't until everyone had finished making their dishes that Dancy realized her huge mistake. But it was already way too late. All she could say was this. I look around and I realize, oh my god, these are human portions. I thought we were cooking for dogs. It doesn't surprise me that she was the only one who cooked food for the dogs. And let's not forget that she took great care that it was dog friendly. When Chef Ramsay saw the dish, you have to hear what he said. Or oh, does that sound f***ing ridiculous? It looks like a dog shat all over my plate. The blue team had to drop Dancy's dish. There was no way they could serve dog food to the customers. While the dish crushed Chef Ramsay's hopes for the first ever dog show, there was one contestant who brought back the spirit of the competition. This is what Hell's Kitchen is all about. There are failures, and then there are successful stories that follow. During the entree round, most of the dishes turned out to be average, but there was one that stood out from the others by a great margin. When Jennifer Salhoff presented her dish, Chef Ramsay had no idea that he was in for a surprise. Her pan-seared chili and sea bass with spicy heirloom tomato broth was so good that it was not only praised for being the best dish of the day, but also named as the most beautiful dish in the competition so far. Thanks to this dish, Salhoff managed to save the day, but this next service was so full of mistakes that Chef Ramsay found it impossible to carry on without losing his mind. So what exactly did he do? He shut the kitchen down. In the third episode of season 5, before the dinner service even started, Chef Ramsay revealed that it was going to be a steakhouse special. He also revealed that they would be doing double seating. This meant that one team would cook while the other would be serving, and then they would have to switch it up for the next seating. It was decided that for the first seating, the blue team would cook and the red team would serve. However, the red team was moving at a sluggish pace with writing tickets, and Lacey D'Angelo was the worst. Chef Ramsay and Jean-Philippe were beginning to get annoyed since only if the kitchen received its tickets could they start cooking their orders. 20 minutes in and the blue team finally received their first ticket. While they were working on their first order, Charlie McKay had forgotten to get the shrimp for the Caesar salad on the grill. But then suddenly, Chef Ramsay spotted something. He was so alarmed that he shouted back by saying, Your cloth's on fire! Your cloth's on fire! What was he doing? How could he miss something this disastrous? 30 minutes into the service, Ben Wolonka sent his desserts to the pass. Chef Ramsay was furious because it pretty much looked like all the contestants were daydreaming at their stations. What are you dreaming of? Are you stupid? No, Chef. You got cheesecake made as well. How could he be so lost? How could you send out desserts before the appetizers were even ready? In the meantime, Giovanni Filippone's steaks were coming back to the kitchen for being raw. With only 30 minutes left for the blue team service, Jean-Philippe realized that D'Angelo hadn't even sent out one of the tickets to the kitchen. This one was a total loser. You just won't believe what she told Jean-Philippe when he asked her about it. She said, I have to go up there and tell him to fire it. Well, who's gonna, who else gonna do it? Jean-Philippe, I've never waited tables before. Gosh, 
Can you believe that? She was expecting the tickets to walk themselves to the kitchen? When Chef Ramsay found out about D'Angelo's mistake, he was furious. But she didn't care. Chef Ramsay asked the team to get on it, but Filippone revealed that there was only one filet left. So Seth Levine was asked to prep another one. But Levine had no idea what to do. While he was asking McKee for directions, Chef Ramsay happened to see it. He called this situation pathetic, but it was only worsened when Chef Ramsay saw Levine put something in the fridge. Ugh, what was he up to now? Chef Ramsay found an entire chunk of the best portion of meat butchered for a small piece of filet. The famous chef was so pissed that the entire chunk of meat was wasted that this is what he did next. We f***ing wasted the most expensive part! Look at it! What are you gonna do, get daddy to buy you a new one? But would things turn around for the better in the second seating? This time, it was the red team's turn to cook and the blue team's turn to serve. As the red team got started with their first ticket, Colleen Creek forgot two orders of Caesar salad and Chef Ramsay accused her of doing it on purpose. But Creek couldn't keep her mouth shut. She talked back to Chef Ramsay and you already know what happened next. Look at me, full salad. Hey madam, you're pathetic. Yes chef. This was indeed a really hellish service. I mean, almost every other contestant was goofing around. With only 5 minutes left before the service concluded, Heinley was still pushing out entrees to the dining room. But Carol Scott mistook an order of New York strip loin for ribeye. There you go. The team was back to being a bunch of bozos. Before they could even correct the mistake, Chef Ramsay ended the service. While this service was doomed to be a failure right from the very beginning, this next service was so full of mistakes that Chef Ramsay kicked not one, not two, but five contestants out of the kitchen. Oh, I promise you, this is gonna be a crazy one. In the fourth episode of the 10th season, during the dinner service, the red team hoped to bounce back from their loss, and the blue team was looking forward to another winning night. When Chef Ramsay called out the red team's first order, Danielle Rimmer was so confused that she asked her teammates about it, much to their annoyance. After clarifying the order, when she sent her risotto to the pass, it was slammed for being raw and under-seasoned. Chef Ramsay couldn't help but berate her for being such a mess. Rimmer continued to maintain the same stride for the rest of the service. Her lack of communication slowed the entire team down. She even decided to deliver her dish to the pass without communicating with Robin Amudavar first. One hour and 15 minutes into the dinner service, both teams moved on to the entrees. Merrill wanted to redeem himself when he got the chance to work at the fish station, but when he sent his cod to the pass, it was still raw. This was only the beginning of Chef Ramsay's long and disastrous night. Cat food. Off with but instead of bouncing back to a good pace, Meryl ended up burning the refire. To make matters even worse, since it was the last portion of cod left, they had to knock it off the menu and replace it with sea bass. Jeff Ramsay was already angry with the mistakes, but what Meryl did next was the last straw. When Jeff Ramsay called out the revised order, everyone replied to him with a loud yes chef. But Meryl had something entirely different to say. He said this. Coming right now, baby. It's coming, baby. You cook like a f baby. What happened again, chef? Get out! This was followed by Roshni Gurani's frustrating performance when she sent out Wellingtons that were stone cold and raw. She was the next contestant to follow Meryl out of the kitchen. But wait, we're not done yet. Though, it's a shame that you got this far into the video and still haven't dropped a massive like down below. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to my channel for more amazing content like this? It's free, so why not just do it? Now, back to the video. Meanwhile, in the blue kitchen, when Don Savage sliced up the steak, Royce Wagner told him that it was raw, but Savage ignored him and went on with it. Seeing the raw steak, Chef Ramsay was frustrated. But when he kept calling out wrong timings for the refire, Chef Ramsay sent him walking right out the door. The red team finally sent out their first entree order, only to find out that the spinach was too garlicky and the sauce for the Wellington was really cold. Chef Ramsay then kicked Rimmer and Alma Devar from the kitchen. With nearly half the chefs being kicked out of the kitchen, the rest of the chefs from both teams continued and surprisingly finished the service. So these were the worst mistakes to have ever been made on Hell's Kitchen. If you ask me, the whole blunder with the dog food was the worst of them all. I mean, yeah, it's not good to waste food, serve raw steaks, and all that. But serving dog food is a totally different thing. Maybe someday we'll have a Hell's Kitchen challenge dedicated to dogs. That's actually a pretty interesting idea. I mean, why not? While I draft my petition for this request, I'll say goodbye for now. Thanks for watching, guys!